All right. Can Jim wrestle seven sumo wrestlers in less than seven minutes? <laughs> He's not even going to try. <laughs> but he can talk about the power of a great question. So we want to talk about uh, how asking correct questions is more important than finding correct answers, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and kick it off. All right. I think that... I think that asking powerful questions is more helpful than knowing the answer. So here's what I mean by that. So people will ask a question like, um, why, why doesn't my husband want to come home? It seems like he finds every excuse in the book not to come home. Wow. Why, is it he's, why doesn't he want to come home? Why doesn't he like spending time with me? Right? right. So that's a very common question among married women at some point. Why doesn't he want to spend more time with me? And uh, you could say he ought to, the answer is, well, he ought to come home. He ought to spend more time with you. Yeah. That's the right thing for him to do. The right answer to this question is, your husband should spend more time with you. Yeah. That's the right answer, Especially right? Especially in that situation. <laughs> right? It's like, yes, ma'am. Right. But, but that's not helpful. Yeah. That's not helpful to her to know, yeah, he should. Yeah. What is helpful? Explore all the questions around why he's not doing that. Yeah. So, for example... Coming home must not be a very pleasant experience for him. What is it about coming home that doesn't ignite his desire to get here? Mm. What, what's happening at home that makes it a place that he'd rather not be? Yeah. Right? Um, what could I do to make arriving home a more positive experience for him? Yeah. Uh, these kinds of questions. Yeah. So there's a book written in 2001 called The QBQ, The Question Behind the Question. And it's designed to help you get to a couple of places. The primary one is the place of personal responsibility. So if you have an employee, if you, if you employ people and you have an employee who's constantly underperforming and you finally say, I'm going to have to fire this guy because he doesn't do his job well. So you, you're asking yourself as an employer, why doesn't this guy do his job better? Well, the question I force myself to answer as an employer is, what context did I fail to set for that employee so that he understands everything that's expected of him and how mm. to flourish? Mm. What resources have I failed to provide him to do his job better? Mm. Uh, what training does he lack that I could have provided that would make him more successful? You know what I mean? So mm. there's a lot of questions you could explore that help you get to a couple of things. One, it is to reveal some blind spots for you. Yeah. So you start realizing, well, I never thought of that. Maybe I have a blind spot here. So you start seeing things you hadn't thought of. Yeah. It also opens the pathway for you to take personal responsibility because I think, I think the secret sauce of a great marriage, I think the secret sauce of being an incredible employee, I think the I think I think the, the thing that is most powerful in the relational world yeah. is personal responsibility. I take responsibility for what I do, what I say, what I what I the actions I've done, mm -hmm. uh, the context I've set. You know, so in that way. For my wife, her frustration is my, it's my responsibility, right? And so if I feel that way, then I'm going to ask myself, how have I created a world, contributed to a world where my wife's frustrated? Mm. What, what have I failed to do that makes her flourish? Yeah. What, what could I do to help her? So I think if you pick any subject, like any issue, you can start thinking of questions around that issue that will help you spot these blind spots. Yeah see opportunities to take personal responsibility. And that doesn't mean that it's always your fault, right? So yeah. I, if, I, if I talk to a couple and they're really frustrated, yeah. if I'm talking, say he never comes home, yeah. right? Yeah. I say to him, bro, you got to come home. Yeah. So the, question he should, the questions I'm going to get him to ask himself are, um, what could I do to make home a more pleasant place, place for both of us? Yeah. How could I contribute to my wife making home a more wonderful place for us to be? Yeah. Uh, how could I? Uh, how could I capture a vision for a greater marriage than I currently have? Yeah. Uh, you start asking. So I would ask him to, ask, to do the same thing with a guy who's had an affair. Mm -hmm. Why has he cheated? Yeah. Okay. And and the simple answer to her is there is no excuse for a husband to have sex with a woman he's not married to. Yeah. There's no excuse for that. So don't misunderstand the questions with, this is your fault. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But there is a context to the affair. Yeah. 
And what is that context? So he's got to be asking himself, why would I violate the covenant with the person I love the most and I pledge my life to? Mm. What in the world's going on with me that I'd be willing to do that? So he's got to ask a lot of questions of himself. But she also has to ask herself the question, what unfulfilled part of his life could I have made more fulfilled? Yeah. What role could I play in energizing him and turning his heart toward me mm -hmm. and igniting that romantic sexual part of our marriage? Not because it's her fault, but because she is part of the solution. Yeah. So give an area, like uh, if you can think of something. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> So, what? <laughs> do that look just to be clear. Uh, but, uh, so, like, say, like, me and my wife constantly seem to argue over even just small things. Just every day it seems like to yeah. just come up that we're arguing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so one of the most common arguments between couples yeah. is, where do you want to go to dinner tonight? And, well, I don't care, you decide. Well, no, you decide. <laughs> And so yeah. no one will decide. And then the yeah. fight breaks out. And then and then finally she says, well, let's go for pizza. And you go, ah, I don't want pizza. And she and, and until this is my, my parents did every, every, every time we would go on a family dinner out to eat, yeah. they would have this fight every time. Yeah. And she would, he would say, no, I want you to pick. And she would say, ah, Italian. And he'd go, ah. She'd say, well, do you pick? No, you pick. She'd say seafood. He, ah. <laughs> You know, until she said Mexican food. And then he'd go, okay. Oh, my God. And then the kids would go, why are we eating Mexican food again? So he'd say, because your mom wants it. Oh. And then they would, the fight would break out, right? Oh, my goodness. So the question, why, why do we have silly little arguments? Yeah. Um, what am I doing that makes that argument happen? Because it takes two people, even no matter what the issue is, it takes two people to argue. Yeah. So uh, how am I contributing to this, to this reality? Yeah. What keeps me, this is a better question. Mm. What keeps me from telling the truth about what I think early? Because typically those arguments are because we're tiptoeing around and not saying directly what we think. So uh, I know that one of the things that's true is that the best marriages are between two assertive people. Mm. I'm able to say, I think, I wish, I want, I like it when you, yeah. I don't like it when you, right? I, so there's no mystery about what I want, think, feel, or desire. Yeah. And I have no mystery about what you want, think, feel, or desire. Two assertive people, then we just then we just work out the details of getting what we both want as much as possible. Or you know what? I picked last week, last night what we ate, so tonight it's whatever you want. But it's assertiveness instead of vague, hinting, hoping they read my mind. <laughs> you know, typically fights come up because I just won't tell the truth or you just won't tell the truth. And there's you know, they always say there's there's that last ten percent. Whenever I talk to somebody and they're telling me something, you know, I really want to know, man, tell me what went wrong. How did, what went wrong between us? Tell me how this could go better. And I'll always say, give me that last 10%, that little bit in your head that's still there that you haven't had the courage to say yet. I really want to hear the last 10%. Yeah. Give me that. Wow. And so uh, if, you, if you make that a, 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 a real thing in your relationship where I'm willing to ask for it and you're willing to give it, that assertiveness really helps. Yeah. Anyway, I think... There's a lot of power in asking really good questions because it'll help you see your blind spots and it'll help you start asking questions about personal responsibility. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And now hopefully my wife and I can stop arguing <laughs> so often. <laughs> and she's, I'm, I'm in trouble now. Let's <laughs> so go. It is what's yeah, going yeah, on. So yeah. there's our, I mean, we made it past our seven minutes. That's okay. Uh, as always. Feel free to reach out to me at joel at ecconline.cc uh, just to say, hey, thanks for making these videos. Or if you know you need some prayer or uh, say you've got pointers and you just want to give them out to me. I'm here to listen to you. So with that, thank you so much for watching and listening. And we'll see you next week.